today is an interesting video for you all. We are speaking about the differences in the Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian Vikings. Uh, because there are uh, some key differences in the types of stories we read about these peoples in the Viking Age, and this is going to give us an idea of how the culture of these people uh, was a bit different, uh, even though the mainstream refers to them all as a bunch of barbaric, savage people. And it's a little bit true. We are all one people, but we are like three very different brothers. So also you're going to see that we have not really changed that much over a thousand years. So super cool topic. I'm going to be a little bit biased, of course. So if you are Swedish or Danish, be ready to get made fun of a bit, but that's okay. You guys are strong enough to handle it. I'm going to make fun of Norwegians too, but uh, our feelings get hurt a lot easier. We're a little sensitive, so we have to go soft on the Norwegians so they don't get offended. Uh, just for all the non-Scandinavians listening in, we all make fun of each other always and have a friendly rivalry, but deep down we love each other even though we don't admit it. Just like real brothers. So uh, anyway, first speaking about Denmark. You pastry eating, potato stuck in your throat mumbling sons of bitches. Held in keft. Anyway, the Danes actually, they were the best Vikings, I have to admit. They were the ones that raided the most, at least on the largest scale, and more importantly, they were the ones that settled the most in the most significant places. Not only did they settle, but they absolutely took over wherever they went. Uh, the main places being England and France, of course. And they set up a full kingdom there. Uh, we have the Dane law in England, of course, which was entirely under Danish control. But uh, later on in time, uh, it, all of England was under Danish rule for a certain time. Then, of course, we have Normandy. The Danish Vikings uh, were raiding the shit out of France, pretty much. And the French got so tired of it that they uh, gave northern France area to the Vikings. And this is the story of Riolo that you all know. Then, about 200 years later, these Normans invaded and took over England again. So England really got screwed there twice uh, during the Viking Age and also about 500 years before in the migration period. All Danish Vikings or Danish uh, um, uh, genetics kind of invading England. So the Welsh and the Scots and Irish, they have almost all Celtic DNA. But if you're English, there's probably very little uh, Celtic DNA in there. And if you're really English, it's probably mostly Danish DNA if we go back far enough in time. So Denmark is also home to uh, the most legendary heroes of the Viking Age, such as King Canute, who was uh, king of all uh, England for a certain time. Uh, we have Svein Forkbeard, of course, who led the fight uh, against Christianization and defeated his treacherous father, Harald Bluetooth, which you all probably know, of course. And then you all know the legendary Ragnar Lodbrok and his sons. And if you want to read about the Danish Vikings, the best ancient sources are Gesta da Nordum, the saga of Ragnar Lodbrok, and also some foreign sources like uh, some French annals on the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle or Bede's History of the English People. Those are all the primary sources um, with no kind of modern modern historian interpretations, uh, which I like a lot. So you know that it's getting straight from the source. So yeah, biggest legends from the Viking Age, almost all of them were Danes. And this was all happening, uh, by the way, at the same time Denmark was trying to defend itself from heavy attack from the Christian Roman Empire, from emperors such as Charlemagne a little bit, but more so later on in the Viking Age, uh, uh, Otto I and II of Germany. They also had to defend themselves from the damn Norwegians, <laughs> who didn't give a shit, they just raided everybody. Uh, so the Danish people by far had the hardest job of all Scandinavians, and they left the biggest mark on the world. So Denmark really has the most impressive accomplishments by far. But this also led Denmark to Christianizing and integrating with the rest of the world a lot sooner than the rest of Scandinavia. Because Denmark settled in places like England and France in large numbers, and the people there integrated very quickly with within one or two generations. And although the Danish genetics spread like wildfire there, um, uh, a ton of people still to this day have uh, uh, Danish genetics in northern France and England area, of course. Um, but the religion and culture of the Danes faded pretty quickly uh, in these places where they settled. And there's relatively little trace of Scandinavian influence there. 
compare that to places where Norwegians, uh, for example, settled. Uh, Scotland, Isle of Man, uh, Iceland, uh, Faroe Islands. These places, the Norse religion and culture lasted for much longer, and you even see traces of this today there, uh, still 1,000 years later. So, of course, uh, the picture... Uh, picture the Danes as the oldest and strongest and most responsible brother out of the three Viking countries. And he's just trying to get his two younger brothers, Norway and Sweden, to get with the times. He would be, Denmark would be the rich, successful older brother saying, Please, would you, come on, would you little bastards just grow up and get your lives together? Come on, the rest of the world is Christian, has civilization, order and peace, and their societies are held together. And you little, you guys just want to keep getting drunk and fighting out in the woods. Come on, please. You guys are embarrassing me in front of my friends. <laughs> so anyway, Norway and Sweden were like, uh, no, up yours, loser. Why would we want to be nerds like you? <laughs> so that brings us to Norway, the problem child. Uh, think of Norway in the Viking Age as the youngest brother that's just a little bastard and likes to cause trouble. So before the Viking Age... Norway was a very wild place that we don't know too much about. We read a lot of stories about Denmark and Sweden before the Viking Age, but Norway was not even really recognized as a common area yet. Uh, they knew the landmass was Norway, but it, it was not really unified under anything really. It was many, many small tribes and kingdoms all fighting each other. We don't know exactly how many, but it's probably countless little small tribes separated by rough landscape and dense forests. Uh, very diverse, very segregated. This is probably how we all lived before, the famous Germanic tribes uh, living almost a thousand years uh, before the Viking Age in Roman times. But civilization and central rule came to these other areas like Germany, Denmark, and Sweden. But in Norway, at the start of the Viking Age, uh, uh, we were again just a bunch of wild bastards living in small tribes in the woods, probably closer to a hunter-gatherer society than uh, an agricultural one. Based on some archaeological evidence, of course, we had farming, but uh, to a much lesser degree than in Sweden and Denmark. Then that all came to an end in the Viking Age. Uh, first, it was our first king who came around to unify the country. This is Harald Fairhair that you all know. And this is really the most significant event in the history of Norway that has shaped us for a thousand years to come because there was a clear split. We were a wild and untamed people uh, for thousands of years and then a king comes in and puts everyone under unified rule. Um, now it's important to say here Anyone who has uh, read some of the sagas, uh, Harald Fairhair was not that bad of a guy. He, he, he was only a bad guy to the people who didn't listen to him. If you kissed his ass and brought him gifts and offered to fight on his side, Harald was great to you. Uh, he would give you freedom, he would give you land, he would make sure you were all taken care of. But if you stood up to King Harald in any way or disagreed with him uh, on things, he would try to kill you if he could. But at the very least, he would make your life very miserable with laws and restrictions. And, you know, especially if you uh, kind of got into little quarrels with any of his friends. So uh, Harald ruled, actually, a very long time, uh, more than 70 years. That's almost half the Viking Age right there. And his sons were not much better than him after that. And they were they were all very oppressive too. So the result is anyone with any balls in the Viking Age left Norway, settled in Iceland, Scotland, Ireland, Greenland, and many other places. Uh, anyone who really valued freedom in the Viking Age left Norway. This is exactly what's happening today in Norway too, but I'll get into that uh, in a minute. So, what else can we say about the Norwegian Vikings? These were explorers and raiders primarily. The Danes were the settlers and invaders. So they came in a lot larger forces, raided big places like Paris and York, things like that. Uh, they settled in much larger numbers. Norwegian Vikings, they were in uh, smaller raiding parties and they raided everywhere they really didn't give a shit they would raid in the next town over they would raid their neighbors if they wanted to and these raids by norwegians and icelanders you're not gonna read about in most of the mainstream history books and chronicles like you would about the larger danish raids but if you read some of the lesser known sagas 
the Norwegians raided much, much more and really terrorized a lot, um, a lot more of the smaller villages and towns, even though a lot of these, they, they were non-violent altercations, a lot of them, and definitely not the pillage and rape and burn stories you hear in the mainstream. Uh, the best sources to read about the Norwegian Vikings is for sure any of the Icelandic sagas, and also most of the uh, later sagas in Heimskring about the Norwegian kings. But yeah, again, the Danes, uh, they're the big, responsible older brother. Norwegians is the young, wild brother. Uh, the reasons for these raids are very complicated, and they're due for many, many different reasons that I will go into in another video. And the Scandinavians raided long, long before the Viking Age. But to speak about the main difference at this time, the Danes had a major uh, population growth at the time, and they were they simply needed more food and space for their people to live in, and that's why they settled in much larger numbers. And also they were settling in areas uh, that, that were under constant attack uh, from, from the natives there. So they needed to settle in larger numbers in Normandy and England uh, for security pretty much. Uh, Norway, they didn't have as big of a population and resource problem, but a freedom problem like I mentioned earlier. That's the reason that they left the country in smaller bands and they settled mostly in uninhabited areas uh, where they could be free. Um, then we get to the most, uh, the second most significant event in Norwegian history, uh, the worst bastard of a king we ever had in the north, Olav Tryggvason. Now he makes Harald Fairhair look like Santa Claus. Uh, Olav did not only force people to submit to his every rule, he tortured and killed anyone who didn't accept Christianity. Absolute horror stories. And Norway did not like that at all, but Olav was able to bribe and convert many of the greedy, treacherous noblemen at the time with help of the Roman Emperor Otto, too. Uh, so Norwegians and even the Danes together could not win a war against the Roman Empire, even though they never got invaded, but they had so much help with the Norwegian king, uh, resources and everything like that, it was impossible to win. But then something happened. Instead of uh, fighting against ourselves like we have done since the beginning of time, the Scandinavians came together. The Danes, led by Svein Forkbeard, who I mentioned earlier, came together with the Norwegians, led by Eirik Håkonarsson. Even the Swedes, <laughs> the Swedes finally got off their asses. <laughs> the Swedes got off their asses, led by their king, Olav Skutkini, and we all three came together and had the greatest battle we have ever had in Scandinavia, uh, called the Battle of Svolder, where all the pagans in Scandinavia met Olav Tryggvason and his forces at sea, and they absolutely destroyed him. Uh, king Olav had the support and finance of the Roman Empire, and still they did not even stand a chance against the united Scandinavia. Um, uh, no army ever stands a chance against the united Scandinavia in their own home, uh, which is why they tried to divide us and use our own treacherous rulers to keep us down again, just like they're doing today. Uh, so one more thing about this battle that uh, that will give us an idea of the differences <laughs> between these countries uh, uh, is, is a few quotes I'll share with you here. When Olav knew that he was surrounded by armies from Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. And uh, here we go, the Danes. This is what King Olav said. These forest goats will not overcome us. The Danes have the courage of goats. We will not fear that force because Danes have never carried off a victory if they fought on ships. And that's kind of true. The Danes were great warriors. They won a lot of battles, but any time it was a naval battle at sea, uh, they lost, even in Paris. Um, so they were not good sea fighters. Uh, then Olav sees the Swedes and he says, oh, the Swedes. They will have an easier and more pleasant time licking their sacrificial bowls than boarding the long serpent in the face of our weapons and succeeding in clearing our ships. I expect that we will not need to fear those horse eaters. <laughs> but then King Olav sees the Norwegian, Eirik Håkonarsson, sailing in with his men and he says, ah, shit. And he then realizes that they are in for a hard battle because they are Norwegians like us. 
So here we go, King Olav, vastly outnumbered, yelling salts at the Insa and the Danes and Swedes and not threatened at all. But when he sees the Norwegian, he tells his men, no, forget about the Swedes, get the Norwegians. Don't worry about the Danes, get the Norwegians. <laughs> so there you have it. The Danish were the oldest brother and most mature and adapted to the new world. Uh, the Norwegians were the youngest brother that was uh, the wild child and everyone was really scared of. And the Swedes, they were the middle child that just liked to sit on their asses and party <laughs> and find their spirituality. Just like a bunch of hippies, just like Swedish people today. <laughs> I'm bullying Swedish people too much, but I'm kidding. Um, I'm going to tell you why, though, this was a great thing. And really, the Swedes are in fact the most important out of all of us. And it's because they played the most valuable role in the preservation of our religion and culture. So the Swedes in the Viking Age. We don't find much information about their deeds in the sources. Um, we have dozens of sagas, really thousands of pages that document the actions of Norwegian and Danish Vikings, but not a whole lot about the Swedes. Of course the Swedes did things, they weren't just sitting on their asses for 200 years. It's just that we don't have a lot of written sources in the Viking Age about what the Swedes did. However, before the Viking Age, Sweden was the top. Sweden was the top dog, really. Pretty much every major battle, event, hero, legend, it was in Sweden. Uh, there were some in Denmark, but mostly taking place in Sweden or with Swedish heroes. Um, also forget that during the migration period, the Swedes played the, uh, the biggest role influencing all of Europe, pretty much. The Goths that migrated in massive numbers all the way through the east and southern Europe, they were originally from Sweden. So pre-Viking age, the Swedes were number one in fighting, technology, society, everything. We have a few written sources that confirm this. Uh, Heimskringla and Beowulf are probably the two most famous ones, but also uh, archaeological evidence. Um, Sweden seems to be much more advanced than Denmark and far more advanced than Norway with weapons, agriculture, technology, all of those things. But uh, Sweden kind of started to slow down in the Viking Age from all the sagas and other chronicles. They seem to be a more peaceful, uh, civilized and religious people during this time. And also they didn't really settle or explore um, in a lot of places like the Danes or Norwegians did. Of course, Swedish people explored and settled. We know that they went east and to Eastern Europe and settled. We just don't have many records of it. Uh, so yes, they seem to be largely peaceful uh, people uh, with more focus on spirituality than anything else. As I mentioned earlier, King Olav has said this as well, um, and a couple of other sources, such as Adam of Bremen with his description of Uppsala, and also Ibn Fadnan uh, writing about the Rus Vikings who were in the east, who we think uh, were Swedish. So the Swedes were definitely the ones who kept uh, the strongest tradition of pagan worship and, uh, and practice, uh, much more than the Norwegians and Danes. The Norwegians and Danes kind of let their native spirituality go, um, but Sweden definitely kept that tradition going strong. Also, in archaeology we find clues about this. Most of these little statuettes and rune stones and, and graves that we're able to learn a lot from, they're found in Sweden. Also, we find lots of evidence of travel and trade with the East in Sweden, such as this Buddha statue and the Reling statuette, which was probably inspired by uh, Eastern spirituality. So it's very possible that the Swedes traveled to the East and brought some of this more Eastern type of spirituality home with them and kind of uh, calmed down from all the fighting and raiding. But also, the fact that Sweden remained pagan uh, quite a lot longer than Denmark and Norway. Uh, even then, there is a lot of evidence that paganism continued a lot longer unofficially in Sweden than anywhere else. And this is the reason why I'm so happy the Swedes were like this in the Viking Age, because most of the existing sources and evidence that we have about pagan, like actual pagan practice, comes from Sweden. The, the myths and, and things like that come from Iceland, but everything we know about the actual practice of Sweden comes, uh, uh, sorry, practice of paganism comes from Sweden. And thanks to this, we have records of how we can practice uh, 
uh, accurately today. So from archaeological finds, burials, rune stones, written sources like Adam of Bremen and Ibn Fadlan, law codes, folk tales, these are all mostly from Sweden. And really also very important that we forget is the grimoires or, or Svartebøker as they're called. These books document different uh, magic practices and folk traditions. We find them starting in the 1500s, uh, but most of these practices are much, much older and can be dated back to pagan times. So for us, the practice and religion of the Vikings, we honestly owe about 90% of our thanks to Sweden. The Danes and Norwegians were too busy fighting and settling to make a good documentation uh, of their religious practice, but Swedes were much more spiritual and we find traces of this evidence uh, today that we can use to reconstruct our religion. So my final thoughts on all of this, Denmark was the oldest, most responsible brother. He was rich, successful, loved and integrated in society uh, and the modern you know, norms for the time. And this older brother tried to get their younger brothers to organize, grow up and get with the times. <laughs> Norway was the youngest child, just a wild bastard that did whatever the hell they wanted pretty much and just caused problems for everyone else. Um, but Norway went through some rough times um, when the world was trying to tame them. Maybe when the brother was like 10 years old, he got sent to military school to get him to behave and it kind of tamed him and it kind of calmed him down a bit. And this is what the unified kingdom uh, in Norway did. They made Norway a little bit more structured and civilized um, but this younger brother still grew up to be a wild badass, um, uh, even though, you know, there was some oppressive times in Norway. Uh, then we have Sweden. Sweden was the middle child. This was the brother that was really the best out of all three when he was younger. He was best in class, best in sports, everybody loved him and work and, and he had the most friends, everything else. Uh, just like Sweden was number one in everything before the Viking Age. But as Sweden, this middle brother, got older, he just kind of got tired of all that. He got tired of being the top dog, and he started searching for more meaning in life. Uh, this brother went traveling around the world to experience things and learn. Maybe he became a monk for a few years, don't know. But then he comes back home, and he really tried to live a spiritual, peaceful life in comparison to the other two brothers. But he was always there looking out for his two brothers when they needed it, and Sweden was ready to fight when it was necessary. So that is kind of the, the main uh, differences that pop out uh, at us um, between the three countries in the Viking Age. But there are many, many more differences, but these are just what you will notice um, most of when you read the old sources. So all of those sources, again, are in the links below. And um, hope you enjoyed this video and it gives you a bit of uh, things to go on. So that's all for today. We see us next time.